Welcome to planet Earth, where six billion humans and untold numbers of other species are all dependent upon a limited supply of natural resources for their survival. Here in the United States of America, the consumption capital of the world, we consume more than our fair share. 5% of the human population consumes 35% of the planet's resources. Every year, we buy 13 billion liters of bottled water, 25 million TVs, 45 million new computer systems, 2.5 million tubes of toothpaste, 2 billion razor blades and disposable razors, 2.5 billion packages of cereal, 18 billion disposable diapers, 130 million cell phones. We live in a world of declining resources at a time that population growth is expanding rapidly, consumption of those resources is expanding rapidly, and industry and the systems that we've created in our society are acting as if the resources are limitless. More and more, products are designed for convenience and disposability, regardless of their cost to the environment or to our health. For example, polystyrene, otherwise known as styrofoam, is quick, convenient, and toxic. Known toxins include styrene, benzene, and HCFCs, which pollute the earth, contribute to ozone depletion, and pose a danger to human health. This product will never decompose, ever. This product is made from old growth. In the manufacturing process, dioxin is produced, one of the most toxic substances known to humans. Formaldehyde, chloroform, and other toxins are also used, which contribute to skin disease, developmental defects, and cancer. These days, everything is designed for convenience and disposability. A cell phone's average life expectancy is a mere 18 months. This product contains lead, a known neurotoxin, known to cause brain and kidney damage. It also contains brominated flame retardants, linked to intellectual impairment in children, and altered sexual development. It is likely to leak contaminants when disposed of in a landfill or burned in an incinerator. Even as you're doing your best, recycle as much as you can and create as little garbage as possible. The waste you see at your home is only the very tip of the iceberg. For every garbage can you put out at the curb, the equivalent of 71 garbage cans worth of waste is created in the industrial processes used to convert raw materials into finished products. With dwindling resources and increasing populations, you might ask, why would we have a system like this? The answer is because you pay for it. When you pay for a product, you don't just pay for it at the checkout counter. You also pay with your U.S. tax dollars to subsidize resource extraction, which has devastating environmental and health impacts. Then you pay again in tax dollars to clean up the toxic pollutants created during the manufacturing process. Dig deep again because now you have to pay more tax dollars for landfills and incinerators and for the resulting pollution these create. And you're not quite finished because with all those toxins in the air, water, and ground, you're likely to have medical bills down the road. I know that a lot of people think that trash is inevitable. It's one of those necessary evils of life, but that's not true. Waste is actually the product of bad design, and bad design can be changed. Welcome to planet Earth, where resources are essential for our survival. So the systems we've created are designed to protect the planet. Zero waste is a philosophy that is larger than recycling. Producer responsibility is the real revolution of the 21st century. It's the other half of the story. Uh, when we start making products with the environment in mind, then we can start recovering them for reuse. And then we have the cycle and that whole cycle represents zero waste. First, to make a product, you have to design for the environment, not for the dump, using recycled resources whenever possible, few or no toxins, and each product must be designed to be reused, recycled, or composted at the end of its useful life. All these benefits come without the sacrifice of convenience. It's simply a matter of sustainable systems and design. Imagine if the product were brought back to the manufacturer and all of a sudden, the industry found themselves being responsible for the end-of-life management of the things they created. With zero waste, manufacturers are responsible for the end-of-life phases of their products. They take them back for refurbishing and demanufacturing to make new products. So there won't be 71 times more waste created by industry because your tax dollars won't subsidize polluting practices. 
Instead, they'll support sustainable systems, like resource recovery parks built to replace landfills and incinerators. You'll have more materials accepted at the curb for recycling, and you'll have virtually nothing to throw away. A zero-waste system isn't an idealistic dream. It's a reality. There are examples of zero-waste all over the world. Some nations have formally adopted zero-waste goals. Others have passed legislation that holds manufacturers responsible for their products. Bans and taxes on products from plastic bags to mercury-containing electronics have been implemented. In the Global South, Zero Waste has become a vital new economic system and jobs creation program. Twenty-eight countries around the world have adopted take-back laws that hold manufacturers accountable for their products. The United States is noticeably absent on the list. In fact, there is very little happening on the national level in the U.S. However, some U.S. communities are taking action. San Francisco is leading the way to zero waste with their new Fantastic Three program and an official goal of zero waste by 2020. The concept of zero waste is taking off around the planet faster than it is in the United States. One of the things that EcoCycle is doing through a new project called EcoCycle International is trying to translate the global experiences around this issue in, for the American culture. How do we create it in America so it makes sense to the way we live? Learn more about Zero Waste and take action to bring Zero Waste to the U.S. by visiting EcoCycle's website at ecocycle.org.